Hello and welcome to My Mate Bought a Toaster. This is the show uh, where we tell someone's life story by going through their Amazon purchase history. Uh, my guest today is the fabulous comedian Ed Byrne. Hello. I'm looking forward to this. I have a long and storied history of Amazon purchases and I... Yeah. I, I, I toyed with the idea of just having a scroll through and going, I wonder if he brings that up, I wonder if he brings that up. But I thought, you know what, I actually am quite looking forward to having certain memories yeah. uh, just rekindled yeah. by this. I this want chat. the cameras and the microphone to capture the moment. Mm. It's a bit like, you know, the Facebook time hop thing, but with mm. junk. Yeah. It's junk hop. Yeah. And you're just, the, the moment where you go, oh, but often there's like a love where you're like, oh my God, I, I love that thing. I should have, you know. Yeah. But frequently you're going to go, is there a lot of junk? Have you got a lot of junk there? I don't know. You tell me. You tell me how much junk there is in this particular trunk. Let's crack on. Uh, we're going to go to one of your earliest purchases, Ed, which okay. is August 2007. Radio. You went absolutely mad for it. Now, I thought when I saw this, I was like, oh, it's going to Edinburgh because it's August. Okay. The beginning of August, 5th of August 2007. Oh, no, that would be, it would have to be, it would be end of July, I'd be buying stuff for Edinburgh. But yeah. You spent what is it? £318 uh-huh. on a huge amount of stuff. Okay. And it's really varied. Okay. So in a way, the whole podcast could just be this first thing you okay. bought. Okay. And, uh, well, and was this is this my very first thing? Yeah. Is this me suddenly I'm I'm on Amazon? Here's Amazon. So I can get anything I want. Yeah. Right. Okay. I feel like you're stress testing Amazon. Right. And just going through and going, yes, yes, that, 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 that. So for example, Tiger Woods PGA Tour on the PlayStation 3. Okay. Yeah. I uh, remember playing that. Yeah. Okay. That was one of those very frustrating games. Yeah. I, I've tried playing golf for real, and I've just ruined several holidays just trying, just spending a day trying to do that, and gone. Yeah, this isn't for me. A golf isn't a golf is for life, not just a holiday. Yeah, you know what I mean. I if you, you need to commit, if you want to take that up, I can help you. But that is a separate podcast. No, I've is given that, up. That, that's a hard note to golf. That went away. Okay, fine. All right. But Doctor Kawashima's brain training. How old is your brain? And it never worked. <laughs> That was for the Nintendo DS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've just found myself yelling at it. Yellow! <laughs> Yellow! I don't know whether it just couldn't understand my voice, but it never worked. But that shows that your brain must have been that of like an 80-year-old man. Well, what? It, it right. turned me into it, yeah. <laughs> it, I was yelling angrily at electronic devices, That's which I, I feel aged me straight away. You've then bought, and I like this, there's a sort of element of Trojan horse purchase here, because you've bought all these uh, graphic novels, you've bought a computer game, and then right in the middle of it, the Robert Palmer album Heavy Nova. Ha! <laughs> that was an uh, that was an album I enjoyed very much as uh, as a younger man. Yes, Heavy Nova by Robert Palmer, uh, mm. which featured, if I'm not mistaken, such songs as uh, Go on, I've got them here. So yeah, Simply Irresistible. Why not? And she makes my day. Yeah. Uh, that was one of the uh, that I had on vinyl uh, back in, uh, and then I left all my vinyl in a flat in in Glasgow. Uh, when I moved to London and then went back to the flat and, and the people I, that used to live there moved out and it was just gone. That's, it was about f- four foot of vinyl. That's heartbreaking. Yes, I had every Prince album and every 12 inch of every Prince single. Don't try and work out how much that's now worth. Yeah. Don't put a number on that I stuff. haven't even started trying to just rebuy them because I'm just like, just don't do it. Are you quite, not that this is necessarily scatty, but leaving a box of precious vinyl behind, are you quite scatty like I that? It wasn't that. I just, I, I, I moved to London by coach. Oh like I didn't drive down around like that. I could so I kind of went back and did it. Like I went back and got me videotapes, yeah, me VHSs, and then I went back again to get my vinyl. And everyone had moved out. Kids today, yeah, moving. They've got a cloud. The cloud hovers above them. Yeah, all the way down the road. Yeah, and you've got a you know it's it's much harder to move in the old days. Yes, <laughs> yes, especially when you were broke and right. you were getting the uh, the 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 overnight coach oh, uh, from Glasgow to London. That was, I think it was eleven pounds. That's got real skipping rent vibes. Yeah. Do we? Have you been back to Scotland since? Do they know where, where you are? So, so how long were you in Glasgow for? I lived in Glasgow for three and a half years. Yeah, uni. I was a student or? there for a couple of years, and then I worked in the students' union. I dropped out of uni, but then I worked as a sabbatical officer at the students' union. They must have hated you because you had all Vice the best President? bits of uni without. I did. Yeah, I sucked the marrow <laughs> right out of every bone. And uh, and enjoyed myself to the fullest at yeah. university, and then started out as a comic. Did that for a couple of months, and then moved to London, where the streets are paved with comedy clubs. They are covered in co- every, literally every paving slab is a comedy club waiting to happen. Um, yes. Ed, let's let's well let's let's dig in and find out. Talking of digging yeah. in, mm, perfect. Tenth yeah. um, of August two thousand and seven, a few days after this enormous delivery arrived, right. you obviously needed something to move the <laughs> comics and uh, uh, computer games around, all these things that you bought. You bought a 90-litre wheelbarrow. 
Uh huh. Yeah, I can see that. That's a bath. That's a that's a yeah. I um, I do still do a fair bit again. That that wheelbarrow broke under the weight of cement. I think. You know, I think I put. I think. Do you know what? I think a cement mixer fell over on top of it. Oh. That one. I've broken two wheelbarrows that way. Wow. Second one was under lockdown. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Bloody. I bloody love a wheelbarrow. This would have been so what year again? Two thousand seven. Oh, we're still in oh seven. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, think, I think I had not that long moved out of London. I think I've only moved out of London in oh six. Okay. So I think that's, yeah, that's probably what was going on there. Did you take your vinyl with you this time? Uh, and I didn't have any vinyl at this point. I didn't vinyl. have a record player at this point. <laughs> well, I'm not getting burnt again. <laughs> I think I, had, I might still have had some mini discs at that point. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love those guys. Yeah. Mini discs were the best. Um, you can really also you can really tell uh, different generations by what form of music they get mm. nostalgic about. Like I love, oh, I love mini discs. Mini discs were great. And you when say they, that to it, but there's a very small window, about five years. You know someone's between about 37 mm-hmm. and 43. If they love mini discs. Anyone else just looks at you like. Well, for a long time, if you were doing, did an interview, sort of pre-podcast days, if people were doing interviews, yeah. you had like syndicated radio guys and stuff like that. Yeah. They, they had a big, chunky mini disc recorder. Yeah. And they were the many. only people using them. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it was always impressive. There was always an element of, oh, wow. Yeah. You can skip tracks on that. Yeah, mm-hmm. I can skip tracks. No big deal. Separate them. Join them. <laughs> That was it. 2007, October 2007 now, Ed Byrne. Um, so life-wise, you've left London by this point, yeah. right? So already I, we've I'm gone from Glasgow to London. with my then-girlfriend, now-wife. Right. Okay. Are we are we kidded up yet? Do we have no, no, no. Oh, no, right, no. okay, fine. Far away from that. Um, and look, we see something which uh, is obviously a massive passion in your life. You have bought three books. The Munros. Ah, yeah. Scotland's highest mountains. Walking the Munros. Yeah. Southern Central and Western Highlands. The smile is on the burn face. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Munros Scottish Mountaineering Club Hillwalkers Guide. Still have those books. Still have them. I have bought newer editions of the two smaller ones, the volume one and volume two. Why? Uh, what, the mountains have Because changed. they come with me. Believe it or not, I think one of them has actually, one of them was downgraded since then. Might have been since then. Yeah, there was 283 and there's only 282. Did Hugh Grant they go discovered and... that one was actually just a little bit shorter than they thought. Did Hugh Grant go and measure it? He... measure it. No. <laughs> if, ever, if anyone sees Hugh Grant yeah. on a mountain, that has a reference to quite a niche film. Um, that right. niche film, that, that was absolute bullshit. That film? There's actually, there's never been a, a gradation between hill and mountain. A Munro has to be 3,000 feet. Yes. But there's no, there is no official delineation between hill and mountain that whole story is bullshit and really? thing that really gets me at the end of that Hugh Grant film is there's a footage of like the villagers the townspeople and said oh and they still do it every year and you think it's real <laughs> and it's absolutely not they've completely it's like that thing with, with, with Fargo when you realise that they were just taking the piss when they said it was based on true events yeah 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 horse shit what none of this yeah. is true it would be quite fun though if it was true uh, in real life to wind up the villagers and just appear one morning with loads of wheelbarrows and just tell them that, yeah. or just, just running <laughs> oh, yeah. out just, that's ah, the thing we do stolen your mountain ah, <laughs> back to a hill so that what year was that October this what, what, what is time? 07 three times you said what year this is oh. I will alert you when we okay. move years when we okay? move on. Okay. we're in 07 so we're in 07 well, what month did you say it was October you bought these famously a great time to go walking in the mountains in Scotland yeah I feel like it was because it was definitely winter time. We were driving. Maybe it's, it's strange it took me that long now because we were driving through Derbyshire, actually. Beautiful. Which is where my wife is from. And it was frosty. I remember. And I remember looking out and going, we, and I just got a hanker and I went, we should go hill walking. We should do it. We should go hill walking. And then I remembered that there were things called the Monroes. I remember um, Muriel Gray hosted a show called the Monroe Show that I re- dimly remember watching when I was at college back in the, again, it would have been 91, maybe. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I just suddenly remembered that there was this, 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 this bunch of mountains. There was a list of them, and you could and people ticked them off. And I just suddenly that was it. I went straight from isn't this landscape in Derbyshire lovely to I am going to start Monroe bagging. And I even remember I didn't even know how to spell it because I spelled it like Marilyn Monroe when I was trying right. to search about it online. Yeah, M U N R O. Yeah, I'm sure there was more resources than this. <laughs> And then realised I was spelling it wrong. And then, yeah, as you say, bought three books. Are you a, a, a spontaneous lane changer like that? Is that quite an Ed Byrne thing to do? To go, that's it. Yeah, I'm going to go and collect mountains. Bye. Yes. And I have I have since had the diagnosis. I, I, I've, I've got the ADHD. Here it comes, guys. Got the ADHD. Congratulations. Which, as, as, as I say on stage, if you're a comedian, it's a bit like being told you have skin. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's a bit like being a basketball player and being told you are diagnosed tall. with being tall. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it is. I was just talking to my older brother about it the other day, and uh, and he was saying, "So you're going to do material about it?" I said, "You know, I've already been doing material about it, 
without realizing that's what I was doing material about. Yeah. Like I had all this material about getting annoyed at myself because I can't find anything and you know losing stuff all the time and yeah. doing material about you know you know starting projects and, and abandoning all these kind of things and and being hyper focused on some things and not being able to focus on others. And he said you. And then my brother just went, you called your first DVD pedantic and whimsical. <laughs> wow, you're right. I didn't even see that. I didn't even register. I mean, it is incredible, isn't it, to look back. And and maybe uh, this happens a lot on the show now. Because yes. we have comics and we have the Amazon thing yeah. is that all it takes is a twitch of my thumb. Yeah. And I've changed whatever everything I'm doing. Like, So we see this a lot. Yeah, And you, lot. you buy one thing and then it says, oh, you want that? You want that book on Monroe's? You know there's another book on Monroe's. And that's it, uh, you're now. That, you know there's also another one. <laughs> the first person in history to be addicted to Monroe's. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you go to Monroe's Anonymous? You mm-hmm. should do that. Um, I mean, did you actually go? Have you, have oh, you I've been. been. Oh, yeah, and, I've, and it is something that I have stuck with. I, it took a backseat for a while when we first had kids. Yeah. Uh, but I was just, do, I just did a tour around Scotland. I did spent a couple of weeks doing, like, as they, doing village halls in yes. Scotland. And then doing... Hiking during the day, so I managed in two weeks. I managed to do eight eight Monroes across four or five walks. Like, yeah, some of them were just one, and others were, yeah. It's a good brand. Do you know what I mean? There's an element of sort of Pokemon cards to it. Yeah, it's, it's a good. It's a strong the Monroes, and there's, there's a certain number, and you've and got you to collect pick them off, and they take you all over Scotland. Like, I had no idea. You can, I mean. You can go far and wide across Scotland to, to, to get them all. It's weird. There's a funny sniffy attitude as well. For people. Sometimes you get people who who are into hill walking who aren't into, into hill walking in the Scottish Islands and they're not into the Munro bagging. They're not into the ticking. Oh. And they they kind of weirdly have this sniffy attitude. Like I had it once in a fucking having breakfast in the hotel before heading out to the hills and I had me Munro book out. Like, and he says, oh, we're doing the Munros every time we... Are we taking them off? Like, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't. I just do it for the love of the hills. Wow. He fucking like stares out the window into the middle <laughs> distance like he enjoys the hills more than I do somehow because he's not counting which ones he's done. <laughs> like, do you think I'm just doing it because I only like ticking things off? Yeah. There are loads of do people. Do you think I also maybe enjoy the hills? There are loads of people at the top just going, eight. Yeah. <laughs> and going, no pictures. September 2008. You bought something called the CNH uh, Pro Pedals Flight Simulator. Oh right, one hundred and nineteen yeah. pounds, literally yeah. two pedals. Yeah. Um, are you into pretending to be a pilot? I actually, at that point in life, I think I'd already I'd done an act a real lesson. I'd, I'd I'd had to go in a plane. Right. And I thought, this is quite expensive. <laughs> Maybe I'll practice at home first. Right. Nice. Uh, nice. And I did. I. I think, I think so if that was a way, I must have bought a whole load again, though, later on in life. You've bought the Flight Simulator USB Pro Pedals, CNH Flight Sim uh, Yoke. Is it called yeah, a Yoke? The Yoke, yeah, this is basically the steering wheel. The thing, steering yeah. wheel. And then you want Microsoft Flight Simulator yeah. X, the, the deluxe edition, because why not treat yourself? Got to do. Um, so tell us a bit about this. You know, we've gone from golf uh, and last I year. I probably spent 10 minutes on it. I mean, I it did. I did not launch a flight simulation career. <laughs> I, I, I bought it, and it's now, now Microsoft, now like flight simulator. I, I think it's just free. Mm. You know, I, I don't think it's even. Mm. It's ridiculous. That I even. I think it, shortly after I bought it, it was. Yeah. You know, you can just get this for nothing. They couldn't believe someone actually bought it. Yeah. And they made so much they, money. They went, let's just make one. it free. Ed Burns funded us. Now we're good to go. Yeah, I actually bought it on vinyl. <laughs> <laughs> it takes so long. Have you ever bought a game on vinyl? You have to plug your turntable into the computer and wait for it to load. I bought all the private pirate pilot license oh my God. Uh, instruction manuals. But again, never that. quite went for it. Didn't. It, do you know what? I did. I started doing lessons. And then my then we were coming up to the fringe. And my wife basically went back to work and went, right. You be, uh, you've been on tour. Mm. I, well, I've been on tour. I've finished tour. But I'm I'm traveling. Now Sick going, of traveling everywhere. I'm now going to learn to fly a plane. <laughs> and my wife went, you've been on tour. I'm now going back to work. You need to look after this child. Fly a child. Yeah. That's what so you need I to went, pilot. Okay. And, I, and I, so I ditched the, 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 the getting me pilot's license. Well, I'm sure your kids thank you. Because, you know, they know who daddy is. Yeah. May 2008. This is extraordinary. One of the most extraordinary things I've ever seen yes, on my memory. I already know it. And I can tell just from the month and the year that this is. 
what this is going to be. 28th of May, 2008. What I find so weird about this, mm. you spent you, sorry, you spent £555 on the Wenger. Do we assume Wenger or maybe Wenger? W- w- yeah, Wenger. Swiss yeah. Army giant knife. Now, this yeah. was to commemorate an anniversary of the Swiss Army knife. Mm-hmm. That's why they did this. Yeah. They put all of their attachments yes. that they've ever made onto one knife. It was in the Guinness Book of Records. It's the largest utility knife or the most most tools in a utility knife it's ever. It's huge. Yeah. You bought two. I bought two. For both of my best men, I got married in June. Oh. I bought one for my older brother and one for Darrow O'Brien, and that was their that was their best man gift. That's I know it was ridiculous to have two best men. That's very well. It's expensive with this. Bets. Yes, I'd yes. have got them. You know, some aftershave or something. But yeah. that's I had been Darrow's best man, and I had been my brother's best man at this point, and I okay. I couldn't. I, I just couldn't. Yeah. The thing is, I really wanted my brother to do it, but it seemed more appropriate to have Dara because Dara actually introduced me to my wife. Oh. She was doing PR for the firm she was working for was doing PR, his PR at the Edinburgh Fringe that year. Oh, I see. You know, everyone meets at Edinburgh. I'm yeah. Like, oh, if everyone meets yeah. at Edinburgh. I was well. always going to marry a publicist. That uh, yeah. was always going to happen. <laughs> um, well, because you feel they can stand you talking about I, yourself. I feel like. You know, where the public goes, so how was it for you? And they'll, yeah. they'll, they'll at least put a good spin on it. That's right. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. And they'll always say, so I've got something really exciting coming up. Yes, yes. It's another child, but I've got something exciting, another project incoming. Tony, whatever it is you want to tell me, can you just pick the best words in the sentence and just say those words? 150 words. Put them in, put them in, <laughs> put them in, in inverted commas. Uh, th- this, this knife is absolutely incredible. Yeah. And we'll put pictures of this up on our socials, at Toasterpod. And uh, you can watch a video of this on YouTube as well, and you can see it because it is... It's enormous. I mean, tell us. It would be completely impractical. You would never take it anywhere. You would never actually use it because while you were trying to, the idea of taking out the the fish knife and then holding this thing that's (laughs) almost a foot wide (laughs) while you you tried to use the fish knife. To to screw as well. Yeah, it would be ludicrous. (laughs) Yeah. And I think that's probably what, it's the sort of thing you would only ever buy as a gift. You'd you'd never buy it for yourself. It is an utterly pointless item. But I love the utterly pointless items yeah. because that says everything about you. Yeah, yeah. It's all about the gift and the, you know, the fun and that this is going to be pointless, but here yeah. you are. And I, I think love it says you. something about, a, about the idea of a best man who goes, look, this oh. is, look at, look at all the things you can do. This is what this signifies. It, they are extraordinary things. Also, I always love the Swiss Army knife sort of idea that that explains why the Swiss Army, not very invading. Yeah. Because if, if that's their knife... Mm. Right. And the fact that there's two companies that can make the Swiss Army knife, there's Victoria Knox yes. and, and Wenger are the two. That's it. Yeah. And no one's allowed. No one else is allowed. I do have a Swiss Army knife. But it's not that big. It's sort of like a normal size one. I love it. It's got a toothpick on it. Yeah. I, I think there's a point in life where you can finally get the knives out using your finger. I think it's normally when you reach the age of about 15, mm. maybe 14, where you can actually just open them. But mm. before that, when you were kid, like my, I bought one for my kids. Like my my eldest is twelve, and he's still struggling to. Yeah. He he will he will take out the the toothpick and use that to take out the knife. You <laughs> That's know. In, good though. Yeah. Problem yeah. solving. Yeah. That's what he's doing. Mm. I bought one. The, the Swiss Army. I think it's Victorinox. Actually, do a kids Swiss Army knife, yeah. which is a troublesome Google kids knives. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. I have a really sort of weird nineteen fifties thing about it. I'm like, I want. We were going to Cornwall. There's some woods near where we were staying, and I was like, I want you guys with your knives in the woods. How long do you think it took before somebody lost an eye? They, he, he, my eldest. Before somebody lost their knife, S- skin. Oh, cut himself right down his finger. Open it right up because they, those kids' knives. Yeah. They say it's fine. It's for kids because it hasn't got a pointed end. All oh, right, but it has got a blade. <laughs> Still got a sharp blade, <laughs> and he literally came running back. Honestly, my wife was like, "This is a disaster. What are you doing? Why would you do this?" I'm like, "No, they've got to learn. Mm. They've got to go and be exposed to." I think they've got, like, they got to learn how to remove their own fingerprint <laughs> yeah. in case they're ever caught by the old bill. <laughs> so you see them approaching, guys. Get out the knife. <laughs> Get the end of your fingers. We can't can't get you. Look, we're moving into 2010 now. 5th of December 2010, there's swaddling wrap. Oh, okay. Yeah, 2010. Yes, we had our first child. 29th of December 2010, yeah. Oh, look. Yes, that's when all the baby stuff comes in now. Yes, cream-fitted Moses sheets. (laughs) Oh, baby's very first book. Mm. There we are. These books are determined to be baby's first. I don't know what their obsession is. We want to be the baby's first book. It's got to be baby's first yeah. everything. Tell me, I, yeah, tell me I'm your first book. <laughs> so needy. Here's something that occurs yeah. quite a lot, Ed Byrne. Mm. Maybe it's for you. I don't know. You've bought um, earplugs. Oh, yeah. I buy 20 earplugs 20. a lot. My wife snores. Okay. That is the main thing. My wife snores. 
Um, I, there may there may even be other things you could find in there to do with snoring. Um, I'm sure I bought a book called The A to Z of Snoring. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you bought a book called Smother Her, for God's sake, yes. Smother Her. Yeah, nice, nice. <laughs> no, my wife, she she does. She um, she, and I and so I I would sleep with earplugs. And now because I got so used to sleeping with earplugs, even when I'm not in the same room as my my snorey wife, you I just got used to wearing them. So I just sleep with earplugs in these days. Don't you find the silence terrifying? I can't do earplugs because I'm too. It feels like I'm too close to my brain. No, what what is weird is that say you're sleeping in a hotel that's got a nightclub beneath it. Oh my god, don't! And admittedly, my days of doing that are are, are becoming fewer. Mm -hmm. uh, it feels like it actually amplifies the bass sound. Yes, well, it would do. Yeah. <laughs> Mm. But you know what? Another uh, thing I found out when I got the uh, ADHD diagnosis, 12 months in counseling, mm. uh, and counting, um, another thing I found out was that people with ADHD are very, very susceptible to being annoyed by sound. Yes. It so, sounds that most people can tune out. You grip onto it like it's yeah. uh, like a life raft. I will lie there in bed, and if someone's having a party three streets away and they're shouting, mm -hmm. I don't care. But if I can hear, boom, 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 that's it, I'm done. I had to, I moved out of a flat once because the uh, the flat next door was empty and no one was changing the smoke alarm batteries. Oh yeah, and I went. I can't. I can't do this. I can't live here anymore. You left. I left. <laughs> I mean, I was on was on my way to leaving that flat anyway. But I went. That this that's the last straw. I can't. It's that. It, it's and it's. <laughs> It's so far apart, you can't quite predict when the next one's Oh, coming. that's exactly that's, it. That's the worst part. You can't yeah. tune something out yeah. that has got that distance. Oh, yeah, exactly. It's the worst. It's, it's like it's almost done deliberately. It's like a bird scarer. You <laughs> yeah, know, yeah, it just yeah, waits yeah, for yeah, you yeah. to relax again <laughs> before it hits. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you bought a Brabantia toilet brush because you're doing pretty well. Yeah, yeah. Brabantia. Don't think I still have that. Okay. But yeah, yeah Brabantia, or, uh, one of those ones... If you ever feel like you're a bit too fancy, like say you got yourself a Brabantia bin in the kitchen, mm. you're quite nice. What you do is you accessorize it with a regular black refuse sack. That is. And that just dresses it down a bit. You're sort of own branding the Brabantia thing. That's your equivalent of wearing sort of Converse trainers with a suit. Nice. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh... <laughs> but it's very upsetting when you see uh, the bit of the black bin bag coming out from underneath the lid. Yeah, that is yes. like an untucked shirt. I can't stand that. Yeah. I need my bins no, I'll to do be tidy. That deliberately, just just to go. Yeah, yeah. I bought a Brabantia bin. I'm not buying the <laughs> fucking bin liners that go with it. I'm casual. <laughs> yeah. That bin is in mufti right now. Yeah, yeah. It's fine. Um, but you've got the toilet brush here, the Brabantia toilet yeah. brush. Uh, again, lovely bit of metal there. I um, find toilet brushes just deeply upsetting, especially ones in public mm. toilets or hotel toilets, because there's always elements of other people's shit. In well, I one of my pet hates is when I stay in a hotel that doesn't have a toilet brush. Mm. I will like. What do you want me to do with this? I I don't want to leave this for the cleaner. Mm. Am I supposed to? Am I supposed to use my hand to get rid of this? Sometimes I can. You can stand up and wee it off. I mean, that is quite disgusting. I mean, that is effort. Mm. Yeah, I find you just get a lot of toilet paper and just stick it down, and then hope that the flush will create some friction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But especially sometimes you're staying in a hotel for a week. Yes. And and sometimes you're on the telly, and the cleaner knows who you are. Now, you know what I mean? Interesting. So you, what you're saying is one of the worst things about fame, Ed, is that you can't have an anonymous poo. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Not one that you can then just leave for the woman you've been nodding to every day. All right. C can you imagine though, someone somewhere having that as idle gossip? You turn up on TV. I don't know what he eats, but he <laughs> leaves some fucking trails on that <laughs> path. All right, 2011 now, uh, Ed Byrne, and this ag another big purchase. Yeah. And again, the the order in which they're purchased is interesting, right? You've gone for the natural Allwood multi height high chair, and then an East Coast high chair. So you've bought two high chairs. Yeah. Okay. 20, okay. We were having our, our second child came twenty May twenty twelve. So okay, it have been about that. Can well, this it? is first of December twenty eleven. But the point is, you bought two wooden high chairs, and then and I don't know what's happened. I don't know. I don't know if you are a tantrumer. But, but six days later, you bought a chainsaw. <laughs> Yes, I still have a chainsaw. Uh, I have many. I go. I. I uh, well, I've got. Yeah, I like firewood. is a, is a big thing with me. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah, I've got into the whole wood fire thing, right. and we did have. A, we don't have a big mass. We have got like a, nearly an acre, and right. there are sort of what were bushes, what were blackthorn hedges that both that became trees and were in the way. So 
they some of them came down. How is it cutting down a, th- a tree with a chainsaw? Because for me, again, masculinity. Dangerous, more dangerous than I shouldn't really have done it. Yeah. Pe- petrol powered? Yeah, yeah. All the proper. And it's not, that's the, the danger. I'm not afraid of that. I'm going to, like, I've, I've never worried I'm going to cut myself around like that. Mm. But, uh, yeah. There's a, there's a definite tricks to dealing with wood because they can come down and then you, you saw them and then they're actually, you, re, you realize that the, the, the branch you do is like sort of under strain and it twangs, Ooh. you know, and then it can, and then it can hit you and, or yeah. you can be up, you can have a ladder against a tree and cut a branch off and then the branch goes down and hits the ground and then falls over and hits your ladder and you're oh dangling. My God. Things like that can happen. Yeah. Have you had any accidents doing that? Um, yeah, I actually have. I, I helped a friend. I have I, I have some friends who've got sort of woodland on their properties. Oh. Have you made friends our with them? Kids, but- our kids go to posh schools. Oh, see, okay, fine. <laughs> our kids go to posh schools. We know the some kid, posh people. The kids go off to boarding school. No, they don't and go to boarding school, but they okay. go to some posh The kids school. go off and do rugby yeah. and, you know, yeah. pony hikes, and then you meet all the other dads. Yeah, yeah. Let's and take some go, of the family trees down. I hear you got a chainsaw. I've got a branch that's hanging off a tree. <laughs> Literally, we and this other guy, this guy who was an old, he's an old Etonian. And I went to his house and he held me. I got, I have a climbing harness. Oh, okay. You know. Is it just a belt? It's no, it's a, you know, you put your, you climb, you put your legs in it and yeah. stuff, you know, and then roped up, threw it over the tree rope. So he's got the rope round a tree. He's holding me. I go up the ladder. <sighs> I take down the branch, but then the branch falls, hits the ground, hits the ladder. And I'm there dangling in midair. He's holding me. I've got the chainsaw. It's still running. <laughs> um, so I did. I dropped the chainsaw and it broke just a tiny bit. You uh, had to drop the chainsaw at this point. I didn't have to. I probably could have held. I could have, but I just did. But you're this is sort of a Ed Burn. I was swinging in midair and I just thought the safest thing to do would be actually to let the chainsaw go. Oh my God. Um, so yeah, there's some antics that have gone on. I just saw a picture of an Ed Byrne grandfather clock. Yeah. Just the metronome just hanging there. <laughs> and this is Tony. Okay, old boy. I'm known. I'm Do you known befriend in the people with woodlands? No, the mm. word gets around. Ed Byrne's at the drive again, school. darling. Oh, Bye. if you've got trees down in your property, you know, you know, <laughs> you know who's really in uh, Ed Byrne. He'll ask him. He'll he'll chop that up for you. He'll clear for you in exchange for some of the wood. That's that's what you do. You, that is. You, I'll you're go sort of into, a I'll tree agent. You'll take fifteen percent. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I love your life, Headburn. It's ridiculous. Uh, we got ourselves a nice shredder here, July twenty eleven. You've bought two. Ah, uh, yeah, paper shredders. Yeah, I bought you one bought for downstairs. Two. I bought one for my office and one for downstairs. What? In the end, it ended up being yeah, oh, <laughs> uh, too much. Did you not think you could carry the paper upstairs to the? I just thought I can't be arsed. <laughs> I thought I can't be arsed. Thought you know because generally. You know, post comes in. <laughs> look, my look, my office is in an attic conversion, so technically it's three floors above. Yeah, but I don't know if you've ever carried paper up three floors. It's <sighs> not that bad. For the for, yeah, but no one's going to go. I'm going to go upstairs to shred something. This is like the equivalent of when you there's a hard and fast rule that whenever you're trying to buy something online, the card with the three numbers on the back that you need is on a different floor of the house. Yeah, right. Yeah. So By that logic, you card. would buy. You'd have a credit card on every floor of the house. No. I wouldn't go that far. Mm. But, okay, that's too far. Right. Okay. All right. Let me ask you this: Have you ever phoned your wife, even though you were both in the same building? Oh, we text constantly. Yeah, there you go. Constantly. So come on, you can't. Yeah. You can't have me for that. Yeah. I, I, admittedly, yes, you're right. It was. I don't know why I'm arguing with you. No, it was a frivolous it. expense. It's hilarious. But only because my wife never used it. She didn't like it. It was just in the way. Mm. I thought, let's have one downstairs. Because that's where the junk mail, that's where the bills come in. They come into the house through the letterbox. Yes. And if you just want to go straight away, bzz, you just tear them up. You know. When you tear them up. You could just you tear just them, tear them up. up. I tear them up. <laughs> just, just like, like you've, just, you've bought a shred, you've bought two. I did buy And two. also, you, they're really expensive ones. Yeah, I know. ADHD I and you know, success. Yeah. Ed is, I went crazy on that. One of them, and what's interesting is one of them pulps the paper absolutely tiny, like smaller than confetti. Right. But. You can only you basically have to put them in one page at a time. Like if you got a yeah yeah yeah, I've got my mum's got one of those. Yeah, if you got like a bank statement. Oh my god, fucking standing there for two minutes. You need to yeah. employ someone. Yeah, to spend the day feeding it in. Yeah, the other one shreds like a regular shredder, but it, you can put a lot more in. Right. Okay. Well, I mean, a good shredding speed, and we will get back to the podcast soon. It's got to be four four pieces of paper per minute, five pieces. Do you know what I mean? Just mm, like bam, yeah. bam, bam. But the way I see it, you can't put your VAT bill even when you've already paid it. You can't put your VAT bill straight into the recycling. No, but you can, no, that's true. You've but got it's, to oh, shred it's it. It's in the cloud now, again, you see. Yeah. All that stuff exists. 
because I'm so safety conscious. That's how I got my email address and my Twitter account hacked. <laughs> Here's a good one. Look, uh, grappling gloves. I went through a bit of a martial arts phase. I had a, I had a wooden dummy for a while. <laughs> yeah. You can't get them on Amazon. But I did have for a while. I, I, I was in a Wing Chun club and I really got quite into the wooden dummy thing. I just sort of imagine your wife walking into the room and one day you're on a flight simulator and the next you're grappling yeah. a dummy and she's just going... There he is. It's yeah. the next thing. <laughs> <laughs> then 15th of January 2018, you spent £230 on the Lego Houses of Parliament. That was from my wife. That's oh, a beautiful... That was from my wife. She loves a bit of Lego. But there's nowhere to put it now. We we have a reasonable size house. The Lego Houses of Parliament sits in the like the guest bedroom. Mm. I bought her the Sydney Opera House and there's nowhere to put it. She bought me the big Millennium Falcon, which is in my office. But she has nowhere to put the Sydney Opera House once it's built. So it's just... it's. Yeah. She hasn't built it yet. You need to buy another house. Yeah, I need another house just to put Lego things in. <laughs> put Lego things in. Yeah. And there's there's nothing worse. I would never do this when especially if you build something with the kids. Mm. Not that I'd let the kids anywhere near that. No. Taking it down because eventually you do have to say we need a space and you take Lego down. It's one of the most depressing things in the world because you built this with your kid who was much younger and now here you are years later just taking it apart brick by brick. Yeah. We've had to do it because of running out of space. It's funny, my, my elder well, my elder boy loves making tech, Technics Lego now. Oh yeah. Lots of cars, lots of cars and mm. that. My younger son doesn't even never like he's kind of grown out of Lego anyway, but he never really liked putting it together. He put it together for you Ninjago was his big thing. Yeah. Ninjago Lego. You'd make it for him and he'd play with it. Okay, good. So, but then that's great because then you, you're playing with your son, but really just building him Lego. Just, exactly. Yeah. And then you're like, here you are, and everyone's winning. But it. now he just, now he doesn't play with it because he's too old. You know, he's nearly 11. Yeah. But it still sits there. Mm. And he's a hoarder. Right. Are you a hoarder? Um, I, no, what, do you know what? I think of myself as, um, what? There was a word I saw it on a, in a news article. I am building, I'm building a prop store. That's what I'm doing. Nice. In case anybody ever wants to set a uh, comedy drama yes. around a particular year, yeah. I have the appropriate laptops, yeah. gaming machines, nice. for uh, mobile phone handsets yeah. for that year. <laughs> Uh, you can use me as a resource, <laughs> as a prop store. Well, you, as I said, and all you'll want a Sony CMZ1 handset. They were quite rare at the time, but that'll really, that'll really identify the age that this is set in. I sort of imagine you like. There's always those uh, grizzled American cop shows, and there's the guy in charge of the evidence room. Mm -hmm. You know, they go to him, and he's like, yeah. one second, and he walks off down the corridor and yeah, comes yeah. back with the, and he sort of seals the tape and opens it. Yeah. And there's Ed Burns' life. Yeah. Yeah. I want to play. I want to play the coroner who eats while he's cutting up dead bodies. That's the thing. <laughs> That's always gotta, always one of those. Just goes, yeah, this is all. I don't. This is how. This is how inured I am to it. I'm just completely me. Look at me eating. Don't you get a lunch break? <laughs> you're on a couple. You're a. It's a union job. Surely you have a paid lunch break. <laughs> Loads and loads of stuff uh, as we get into your last few months. Uh, one thing we haven't really dwelt on, actually, which we'll mm. quickly do, quite a lot of um, exercise stuff as well. There's lots of yeah. outdoorsy things and um, lots and lots of weights. Yeah, I did. I, I, you know, I got into it. Are you familiar with the comedian Paul Meyerhog, Canadian stand-up? No, I don't know. He opened know for me on tour, on a couple of tours. He's a very funny man. Yeah. He got it. He, he got me into it. He said, we're going to do it. We're going to go. We're going to have a plan. Yeah. And we did. And when we were on the road, we joined one of those one of those gyms that's got a gym in every town. Yeah. And we went and we worked out. And around, around 2019, early 2020, just before lockdown, I was in the best shape of my life. With the muscles bigger? They... they were or were they there? I mean, they were there. Because I've never had that. And it wasn't just that. I found I was able to lift things up like my kids <laughs> with God. ease. Nice. And it actually, I, I enjoyed it. And then lockdown came and it all went to shit. Yeah. Yeah. Who knew? Yeah. You didn't need to lift your kids up then anyway. They were mm. old enough to, you know. Yeah. I mean, I'm aware that I'm never going to be body. I talk, I just another one I do a joke about in the act where I say about like, I'm not, I'm not genetically predisposed to putting on muscle mass. I'm what's known in the bodybuilding fraternity as a hard gainer <laughs> or lazy twat, depending on how you look at it. But the thing is that it's, it's what saps your motivation is knowing it's never, you're never going to get that big anyway. Yeah. Like, I'm aware that even if I worked out every day, mm. or even if I took steroids, human growth hormone, all the rest. I know the best I could hope for is maybe eventually one day I'd look like Iggy Pop. <laughs> and that's <laughs> disgusting. And it's the goal. <laughs> As an end point. Yeah. That's not a journey you want to set off no. on. This is really interesting. A surf blue gluggle jug. 
It's it's well, that was for my wife. That's like a sh in the shape of a fish. Yes. Yeah, and you pour it to water jug, and it yes. makes a big <laughs> noise when you pour water into or out of it. And do you say this is you snoring? Ha! <laughs> Should do. Yeah. <laughs> this is what you sound like. <laughs> Look, here's another. I mean, I don't want to point this podcast, the end of this fantastic podcast. I don't want to point it in a direction of mortality. Mm. Uh, 13th of February, just before Valentine's Day. Really romantic. You bought a blood pressure monitor. Ha! <laughs> that again was because of the ADHD medication. Yes. I have, I'm, I'm supposed to be monitoring my blood pressure nowadays. And uh, in true ADHD fashion, how many times have you done that? Um, I've not done it <laughs> because I never did it before I started taking the medication. So I've actually got no baseline to register it against. <laughs> so what's the fucking point? Hooray! <laughs> and this was the last uh, podcast Ed <laughs> Burn ever did. Um, well, no, listen, uh, Ed, uh, this has been uh, an absolute joy. Thank you. Taking a, you know, a yeah. walk. No, I really, I've enjoyed it. I, it's not been as embarrassing as I thought it was going to be. No, no, I just think you've got no shame. Yeah. You're just not that, embarrassed. Maybe that's why, that's what it is. Yeah. I, you know, I, you know, I, really, most people would have been embarrassed by a lot of this. <laughs> um, Ed Byrne, you're a superstar. Thank you so much for coming on My Mate Bought a Toaster. Uh, your podcast. It's called Ed Byrne Needs a Hobby. Brilliant. And uh, it, it's it's coming soon. Let's put it that way. Cannot wait to hear it. Thank you so much for doing the show. Thank you. It's my mate. Oh, it's my mate. Oh, it's my mate. Oh, it's my mate.